In this problem, I need to find all solutions to this equation here, and my answers need to be in the interval 0 to 360 degrees, so I'm in degrees. And since it says I need to round to the nearest tenth of a degree, that means I need to use my calculator. So let's look at this problem. I know the cosine of theta is 0 0.85. Well, 0 0.85 is not a value that is on the unit circle. So we're going to have to use our calculator. And we're going to have to say theta is the inverse cosine of 0 0.85. I need to find the angle that this trig function came from. So this is what I need to type into my calculator. So let me go down and find my calculator. And let's check the mode. I'm in degrees. So I'm ready to hit inverse cosine or arc cosine. It means the same thing. So it's second cosine. That, that gives me this writing up here. Inverse cosine of 0 0.85. And then don't forget to close your parentheses and hit enter. I need to round it to the nearest tenth of a degree, which is this position. Therefore, that 8 is going to round that 7 up. So I'm going to get 31.8 degrees. So let me write that over here. So I know theta equals 31.8 degrees rounded to the nearest tenth. Now, is this angle in the required interval? Yes, so I have found one of my answers. But notice the calculator only ever gives you one answer because it's using the definition of the inverse cosine function. And remember, the inverse trig functions always have restrictions placed on them. And the angle I'm looking for from an inverse cosine has to lie somewhere between 0 and pi, or 0 and 180. Since the cosine was a positive number, I found an angle in quadrant 1. So this is my quadrant 1 solution. And it's the only one the calculator will give you. But using your mnemonic, all students take calculus. We know that the cosine is positive in quadrant 1. We just found that. Which other quadrant is the cosine positive? I think it's also positive in quadrant 4. So that's what I have to find now. So I need to come up with a quadrant 4 angle whose cosine is 0 0.85. And this is where we use reference angles. So remember, my first angle is in quadrant 1 up here, whoop, terrible drawing, excuse that. Here's my angle theta, and I know theta is 31.8 degrees. But remember, for an angle in quadrant 1, the acute angle that angle makes with the x-axis is itself. So the reference angle is also 31.8 degrees. The reason we find this is to get an angle in quadrant 4, we need an angle in quadrant 4 whose reference angle is 31.8 degrees. So all you have to do is draw yourself a picture. I need an angle here in quadrant 4. Remember the reference angle is the acute angle the terminal side here makes with the x-axis. So here's my reference angle. And the reference angle for this one has to be exactly the same for the angle in quadrant 1. So all I have to do is find that angle theta that I'm looking for. Well, I think you can see from the picture, that's why I always draw a picture, theta plus 31.8 has to equal one complete revolution. So how are we going to find theta? We're going to subtract the reference angle from... 360 degrees. I never memorize how to find reference angles. I just draw this picture and then it's obvious. So in this case, theta is 360 minus 31.8, which is 328.2 degrees. Don't forget to write the degree symbol on. So there are my two solutions that lie between 0 and 360. 
Don't forget, when you're done, you can check this last one by going back to your calculator and finding the cosine of this angle. So the cosine of 328.2 degrees is 0 0.8498, but if I round this to two decimal places, do I get the number I started with? Yes. You will never get exactly back to where you started because we rounded our answers along the way. So this tells you you got the problem correct.